It's my birthday today. My wife got me a new coffee cup. Look at that. It's got a shark on it. How fun is that? Other side says pokercoaching.com. Be the shark. We may be having a rebranding coming out uh, in the very new, near future. I'm excited for that. Be the shark may be the tagline because I want all of you to be the shark. If you all can hear me, see me, etc., please let me know. Seems like we may be having issues. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's not right what we need. We need this one. All right, beautiful. Always fun whenever uh, things don't function properly. I think it's working. It says Twitch is not working, weird. Why is Twitch not working? Hmm. I'm not sure. If anybody's here, please let me know. If we're not on Twitch, I guess such is life. Looks like everything's working, but you never know. Sometimes stuff just doesn't work. We are giving away a little bit of money. $5,000 for the holidays. Oh, you can hear me. Good. It says 4 4 is working. If anyone's here from Twitch, let me know. Good, good, good. Maybe it is working. Who knows? Okay. It's just all frozen on my end. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for being here with me today. We are giving away $5,000 in cash to learn about that. Head over to pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. I realize a lot of you need some money for the holidays. I'll be your Santa Claus. I'll give you some money. So make sure you check that out. Today, we're going to be discussing how to beat the small stakes and move up. Because I know that is the goal of, well, basically everyone. We're all trying to beat the games and move up, right? I've done that. Many of my students have done that. And I'm going to explain how you can do that. But understand, to crush the small stakes games, you must learn to play a fundamentally sound strategy. And you then have to put in the time if you want to succeed at poker long term. So many people think I can just goof off a little bit and uh, play some poker and have a beer and watch a training video and I'm going to be really, really good at cards. Hate to break it to you, but that's not really how it works. So tip number one, increase your aggression. Most players in the small stakes games play way too weakly and way too passively. Here are this, just two charts. We have loads of charts available at pokercoaching.com in the tool section. So make sure you check out those downloadable charts. They are there for you. And let's just take a look at this hypothetical spot, button versus cutoff. This is a situation where if you're playing in a cash game, especially where there is a rake, this is a spot where you need to be doing a decent amount of three betting. As you can see, all of these hands in red get re-raised, okay? You need to be there battling, blasting, fighting hard, and actively working to win lots and lots of these small pots. Instead, a lot of people call the button with all sorts of nonsense. Someone raises, they flat the jack eight suited on the button or the nine seven suited or the seven five suited in a cash game. And that is a mistake, assuming there is rake in your game. And in most small stakes game, the rake is actually quite big, right? So if the rake is big, you need to be playing a very snug strategy that's also very aggressive. As we see here, in the small stakes, or in the small blind, against the button raise, you see that you should be three betting your entire playable range. Some of you are saying the giveaway link's not working. Huh, all right, I'll tell my team. Give me just a second. I don't know how to spell holiday. H-O-L-I. There we go. Somebody will be on that in the very near future. Let's see if it's broken. If it's broken, it's broken. Oh, look. Seems to be working for me. Oh, that's holiday sale. We need the giveaway, don't we? Let me get the giveaway. Edit. Sale page works. <laughs> so we're good to go, huh? Nothing found. All right, you're right. 
Give us a minute. We'll get it back up. Okay. Increase your aggression. You got to get in there. You got to battle. Stop calling raises with nonsense. Just because everybody else calls raises with nonsense does not mean that you have to call raises with nonsense. Realize that your opponents are screwing up. They're playing poorly. This is the reason they are stuck in the small stakes games. And if you copy your opponent's strategies and think that you're supposed to do what they do, that makes no sense. If your opponents are stuck in the small stakes games, you should be doing something very differently than they do, right? You should not be trying to emulate them. And it turns out a lot of people think that they're supposed to copy other people or they assume what their opponents are doing must be reasonable because they're doing it right. But no, 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 no. Understand that your opponents are screwing up in the small stakes games and you do not want to do what they are doing. If you three at these hands and miss the flop, what do we do? Well, it depends on how many players you're against, right? If you're against one player, you should be continuation betting decently often because you should be three bet a continuation betting a lot when you have the range and nut advantage, right? But if you three bet and get seven callers, well, perhaps you should use a even tighter, stronger three betting range and you should not be continuation betting into seven players, right? So assess the scenario reasonably. All right, tip number two, value bet thinly on the river. Small stakes players have two main leaks that allow you to profit from this. First, they do not check raise the river often enough as a bluff. So when they do check raise you, they usually have a good hand, right? Also, they don't protect their passive actions with strong hands. I was actually just coaching a player who was at the World Series of Poker main event final table that's gonna be played in Vegas in about six days. And this is something we discussed about how the right strategy is very often to trap. You're supposed to be check calling with stuff like sets. And what a lot of people do instead is they check raise their sets every single time. Aces, when you're shallow stacked, very often slow plays. And that is a problem if you are not slow playing these hands. So most people, whenever they play passively, they always have something like middle pair or worse. And if your opponent's range is middle pair or worse, that allows you to value bet thinly, right? Understanding, understand though, if you are exploiting players who do play a little bit too cautiously, a little bit too passively, when they check raise you, you in turn should drastically overfold. You should not sit there and think that um, you should pay them off as the GTO solver would. You should overfold because they are not bluffing you. All right, let's take a look at this hand here. We have pocket tens playing 100 big blinds deep. We raise it up to $6. Big blind calls, king six four. They check. We can continuation bet here using a small size. Sure. We bet small, they call. Turns to three, they check. We can go either way between checking or betting. Whatever you want. River, they check. At this point, our pocket tens is the best hand by a mile because most players in the big blind in this spot would have check raised the flop with a king. And if they didn't check raise the flop with a king, they would have bet the river with a king. So if your opponent doesn't have a king, our tens are very, very premium, right? So this is a spot where we need to go for a value bet. So many people just check it back here because they think, well, if I bet, what can they call me with? It turns out if they have a nine, as they could with a flush draw, if they have a six, as they could with any middle pair on the flop, they are going to consider calling a bet on the river. Here we go $15 on the river. Depending on your opponent's strategy, maybe we should be going for this size or maybe we should be going for a smaller size, like eight bucks. But this is a spot where I definitely think we need to bet the river and we wanna bet a size that our opponent can reasonably call. This time they do call, they do have the six and we win a little pot. And a lot of people don't really think much about this, but recognize playing it in this manner extracts an additional $15. It's a lot of money. Imagine if you could increase your win rate by $15 every hour or every day even. If you want an extra $15 a day and you play poker every day, let's get out the calculator. $15, let's see, can you see the calculator? $15 a day, just doing this one time a day. Times, let's say you play 350 days of poker a year because you're a full-time pro. This alone makes you $5,250 playing one to no limit. Could you imagine that if you left 
even this one bet on the river. You're just costing yourself loads of money. And now that you know to not do this, you will not cost yourself loads of money. Obviously in this spot, if you do bet the river and get check raised by a generally straightforward passive player, you of course fold, okay? Tip number three, play tightly in multi-way pots. Oh my goodness. When a lot of people see the flop, someone is going to have something. I've said this a few times in these videos on uh, YouTube, and it seems like people always forget. They keep sending me these hands where they have a good hand for a heads up pot, but a bad hand for a seven way pot, and they end up stacking off, and that is a big, big error. Realize, if you are not the player with a really strong hand, it's probably someone else, right? So you want to make sure that you proceed with caution when two players, besides you, are very interested in the pot. So let's take a look at a few hands here. We raise it up with ace-five suited, get some callers, flop comes ace-jack two. All right, pretty good hand. If we were heads up, this would be a great hand, but we're four-handed here. It is reasonably likely in this spot that we could be beat. So in this scenario, I think checking is actually fine. If we check and someone bets and someone calls, fold. Take, take your cards and deposit them right into the muck pile because someone probably has a better hand if it goes bet and call. If it goes bet and raise, we're definitely done, right? So this is a spot where I think checking is probably better than betting. If we do bet, I think betting is acceptable. We get called by one player and we get called by another player. At this point, we're done. We're done. You may say, but they could have a jack, but they could have a flush draw. Sure, they could. But this is a spot where it's just too likely that one of us, one of them has a speed. Our hero does get smart and check, check, check. This player bets 40 bucks. It's time to fold immediately. Fold it. If you do call, as our hero does, the plan is to check fold basically every river. You may say, but there are some busted draws. There are, there are some busted draws. But this is a spot where it's just too loose to stick around in this scenario. It's way too likely, given it was four ways, and given we're against the cutoff, right? Cutoff typically calls with reasonable hands. It's just way, way, way too likely that we are beat in this scenario. And um, this time the opponent had 10-9 for the backdoor flush draw, so I would have folded a little bit early on the turn. But notice, if the opponent does miss on the river, they probably don't bluff, and we don't win any additional money. And also, they didn't have to have exactly the draw. They could have easily had... Um, the ace, right? So this is a spot where even when they're drawing, they still have loads of equity. In a multi-way pot in the small blind, if you had top pair with a good kicker, should you be leading? No, 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 no. Leading is very, very bad. You want to be leading when you have a big equity and EV advantage, which basically never happens on the flop. On the flop, you should almost never be leading. You should be checking very, very frequently. Now, I suppose there are like some small corner cases where leading is at least reasonable, but for simplicity, you should probably just not do that. All right, let's take a look at 9-8 of spades. We raise it up with 9-8 of spades, which is perfectly fine. Flop comes ace, jack, two, two spades. I think continuation betting here is acceptable. Um, this is a spot where we are going to have to triple barrel if we're against one opponent because it's pretty easy for one of our opponents to have an ace with a bad kicker or a jack that will fold if we triple barrel. If you're playing against players who don't fold middle pair, as someone told me the other day on my show, A Little Coffee, my opponents won't fold bottom pair. What do you do? Well, the answer is you don't try to bluff them, right? You don't have to bet here. It's fine just to check. So this is a spot where if you know your opponents literally never fold anything by the river, they're going to put their whole stack in with nothing, <laughs> then, I mean, I guess you don't want to be putting yours in with the even worse nine high, right? So this is a spot where you're, you should usually be betting because we have a draw that lacks showdown value, but against a super duper calling station, maybe be a little bit more cautious. That said, I don't, I can't remember the last time I played against someone who will call a flop bet, a turn bet, and a river jam with bottom pair, no kicker. A lot of people like to exaggerate. Don't exaggerate to yourself. When you exaggerate to yourself or to others, you're lying and you don't want to be a liar, right? All right, here we bet, we get raised small, and then it goes re-raise. Okay, now this is a scenario, you hear my kids screaming, even my kids know this is not a spot where you want to put your money in a pot. Whenever it goes bet, raise, re-raise, take your cards and deposit them in the muck pile. And you may say, but we could be against 
two sets or we could be against two top pairs. Sure, you could, but this is a spot where we're going to be against a draw some portion of the time. And if we are against a draw and a made hand, we are drawing thin to dead. So while when we do get it all in here, we're like, okay, we're usually not going to be dead. Sometimes we're dead and you really want to sidestep this situation. Also notice, what are our options here? If we call, this player may call, but then if we get a blank on the turn, this guy's going to jam and we have to fold, right? So we don't even get to realize our equity fully. Um, if we go all in, now the player in the hijack could easily fold, and then we're just heads up in a spot where we're only going to win 38% of the time or something like that. So this is a spot where we simply have to fold. We have no options besides to get out of the way. Here the hero butchers it, though. They shoot themselves in the foot. They took their foot out. And now only bad things are going to come for the hero. Hero gets called by both players. And, um, ooh, drawing dead. You do not want to be all in drawing dead, right? A sex of spades and two is going to show up. Did you see it ahead of time, Scott? <laughs> you don't want to be in there drawing dead. Do you shove if you have the ace high flush draw? No, I would have called here. When you have the ace high flush draw, if you go all in, you're only going to get called by sets and two pairs, right? So even with a hand like ace five of spades, you're not loving it. That said, you're not trying to fold because you beat the worst draws. And scenarios like this, when, when you have the best draw, you want to keep your opponents in with worse draws. Okay? Tip number four, don't overplay marginal hands. Leading or raising with marginal made hands, such as middle pair or top pair bad kicker, even on draw heavy boards is almost always a mistake. Almost always. So this is a spot where if you do have a hand like middle pair and someone bets, you just call. Sometimes you're going to get um, outdrawn, but in exchange for getting outdrawn sometimes, you keep your opponents in the pot with all sorts of nonsense. Okay? So be aware of that. The goal with your marginal made hands is to get to the showdown. So play them passively, especially on the turn and the river whenever you probably have the best hand if a little bit of money goes in the pot, but not the best hand if a lot of money goes into the pot. Do not fall into the trap that a lot of recreational players fall into of trying to price their opponents out. Because whenever you try to price your opponent out with their draws, yeah, if you go all in or raise huge, you can make them fold out their draws. But what about their better made hands? Their better made hands don't fold. So if they're not going to fold their better made hands, what ends up happening is you're just getting it in against their nut hands. So how does a hand like middle pair, top pair, bad kicker do against top pair good kicker or a set or two pair? Well, it turns out it does very, 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 very poorly, right? Sarah says, OMG, you're seeing a lot of your mistakes on this stream. Well, <laughs> that's the goal. My goal here is to point out some mistakes that you may or may not be making or that your opponents may be making to make sure that you fix the flaws in your game and take advantage of the flaws in your opponent's game. So do not overplay your marginal made hands trying to price your opponent out. Does not work. Also realize you can't actually price out the good draws all that often, right? Because if it's a good draw, it has plenty of equity. Tip number five, learn how to deal with variance. In an eight-hour live cash game session or a tournament session, you may only play 280 hands. That's actually not all that much. Let me go tell my kids to be quiet. Shh, please be quiet. Please be quiet. It's a live show. Someone says, why don't you show new videos? What do you think we're doing here? We're doing a literal live show. My kids are outside screaming. James is standing right outside this door, screaming his head off. I said not screaming. He's just talking very, very loudly. I think he's learned to project his voice like Jonathan Little has to do because Jonathan Little is making content for all of you. Is this live? Yes. Because no one folds. Oh, good. I'm it. This is such an easy spot to win. If you have found players who don't fold, oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you because you are going to be rich. All you have to do against people who never fold is stop bluffing and value bet thinly. 
It's so easy to win if your opponents are awful. I'm very, very happy you found those games because they don't exist all that often. I don't, I can't remember the last time I played against a game where people call down with literally any king high or better. But if you found that, congratulations. You owe us all Christmas gifts and holiday gifts and presents because uh, none of us get to play in games that soft. Most of our opponents play at least reasonably. Okay, learn to deal with the variance. In an eight hour live cash game session, you only get to play 280 hands. So stop worrying about winning one individual session because quite often in a session, you only get to play one or two or three or four big hands and you're gonna lose one or two or three or four big hands in a row sometimes. You should instead focus on printing equity long-term and making good decisions. So many people get it in their heads that I have to have a winning session. If I don't have a winning session, it means I am an absolute failure at life. But that's not good. Sorry, people on my team are trying to talk to me. You have to realize that your goal is to make the best decisions you possibly can. That is it. If you are concerned with things that don't matter, like your image to the other people in the game, or um, things like, oh, I, have, I feel bad if I lose a session, or I think I'm bad at poker if I lose a flip, you got to get over that. You must get over that immediately. ASAP, your goal is to simply sit down and play great poker. That's all you can do. Play great poker, you win money. Play bad poker, you don't win money. Next, play properly bankrolled and take smart shots. Realize poker is not a get rich quick scheme. And if you try to parlay your money where you take a little bit and try to run it up to a lot, you are going to have an incredibly difficult time moving up in stakes and you will almost always end up going broke. Now, sometimes, every once in a while, someone will parlay their money. Chris Moneymaker did this a long time ago. He satellited into the World Series main event for some small amount like 50 bucks, ran it up, won a million and change, and he's good to go. Understand, that does not happen all that often. In cash games, I've seen plenty of players start off the day playing with $200 at one two no limit. When they get up to 500, they move up to 2.5. When they get up to 1,000, they move up to 5.10. Next thing you know, 28 hours later, they're playing 25.50 with $8,000 in front of them. And it often doesn't work out so well because quite often you can be better than your one, two opponents. But as you move up higher and higher and higher, especially in games that you are not comfortable with or not used to playing, you're going to end up going broke. It's hard to win every single hand and uh, w without without getting stacked. It's just going to happen sometimes, right? So understand that when you are in the bankroll building phase of your poker career, as almost everyone is if they are not already playing the very high stakes, you should usually try to limit variance. And how do you limit variance? Well, you focus on smaller field tournaments that don't have a lot of variance and on cash games. Understand that your bankroll requirements are substantially larger when you are playing in gigantic field tournaments. A lot of people may think, oh, I'm bankrolled for $20 or $200 tournaments, so I'm going to go play this $200 tournament that has 4,000 people in it. Turns out you need a humongous bankroll to play a many thousand person tournament, even if the buy-in is normally within your... Um, normal bankroll requirements. So for a full discussion on bankroll, check out pokercoaching.com slash bankroll to make sure that you fully understand that because I do not want you making poor decisions. That said, you should take shots accordingly. By doing that, that is going to give you a reasonable chance to play for more money than normal in sort of a controlled way such that you give yourself a good chance to play with a big edge. So you want to find a game you can beat and play it a ton. Find yourself a money tree. So how do we take shots from there? Say we're normally a good 1-3 player. We can beat 1-3. What do we do now? Well, what I suggest you do is I suggest you move to 2-5, slightly higher stakes, right? And then play when those games are the softest, right? So when are the games the softest? Usually late at night, usually on weekends, 
it's quite normal for a lot of good cash game players to play a smaller game during the non-peak hours and then a bigger game during the peak hours, right? Now that sort of implies that you are being sane, you're not having a party at the table, you're playing well, even when everybody else is losing their minds. You need to be the sane one when everyone else is losing their minds, okay? Understand, whenever you do take that shot at 2-5, let's say you normally have, I don't know, let's say you have um, $15,000 to your name. You're solid winning one three player, you can definitively win 20 or 30 bucks an hour there. What I would recommend you do is give yourself 2,500 bucks or so to go play 2-5, five, five buy-ins. If you lose your five buy-ins at 2-5 during peak hours, either you ran poorly or maybe you're not quite skilled enough to win in that game. Who knows? You need to pay attention to that. But that's going to give you a reasonable shot at it. What a lot of people do wrong is they'll normally play 1-3 and then they'll give themselves $500 to go play 2-5 and they'll lose because, like I said, it's kind of hard to run hot with one buy-in and never get stacked. And then they get discouraged, they move down, and that just does not give them a good chance for success. If you do give yourself that five buy-in shot, though, and you do not succeed at it, then you got to move down. You got to be disciplined. Do not get it in your mind that I'm a 2-5 player now. I'm never moving down. It happens to a lot of people. They get a taste of playing the higher stakes, and they get essentially addicted to it, and they attach some sort of emotional ego response to I must be a failure if I am moving down. But no, the fact that you are willing to move down and others are not are the reason that you will not be a failure. Hate to break it to you, but very few people have had nice, steady, upward graphs throughout their entire career. You will at some point run worse than you ever thought possible. It's going to happen. If you play enough, it'll happen. It's happened to me a few times. You're like, oh my God, how does it keep happening? <laughs> but that is variance. There's a lot of variance in poker and you need to make sure that you are protected from it. Um, in terms of tournaments, whenever you're looking to take shots in tournaments, I generally recommend you look to play about one level higher than your normal game, usually when the fields are the softest. Don't go from something like an average buy-in of $33 into a live $1,500 tournament to take your shot. So many players play live locally in tournaments all year in like $50 and $100 games. They get together something like $5,000 in profit. And then they decide, I'm going to go to the World Series and play a bunch of $1,500 buy-in tournaments. When I say a bunch, I mean three because that's all the money they have. And that very often does not go well. Every once in a while, they're going to run hot. But more often than not, it does not go well and they end up going home broke. And I don't want to teach you to be able to take shots and hope to get lucky. I want to teach you to succeed long term such that you're properly bankrolled to go to Vegas and play those $1,500 buy-in tournaments instead of just having to get lucky. And if you waste all of your time trying to get lucky, you are not going to be set up to succeed long term. And I want long term success for all of you. Tip number seven, study hard and improve every day. If you only use your experience and skill, you may learn to beat a specific player pool, but it's going to be difficult for you to move up. And unless you have a definitively proven win rate over a pretty big sample, you should be studying just as often as you play. So many people think, I want to go play poker. I like to gamble. But in reality, if you want to win long term, you have to get rid of these unnecessary urges to go and gamble and splash around and try to get rich, right? You actually get rich by studying away from the table. If you look at pretty much every gigantic winning poker player, they have spent a lot of time working on their game away from the table in various ways, talking to friends, um, developing study groups, watching training videos, reading books, running solving, uh, running uh, simulations. You know, they're doing all sorts of things like this to improve their skills such that when they go sit at the table, they don't have to guess about what the right play is. They know the right play because they've already studied the spot. I definitely recommend you focus on active learning instead of passive learning. At PokerCoaching.com, we have what I think is the most interactive training site that exists. We have over a thousand interactive quizzes that force you to say what you would do in every single round of a hand. And you get feedback in real time as to whether or not your play is good or bad. Going through and doing that 
will go a long way to helping you improve your poker skills because you're getting immediate feedback from world-class professionals. Also, we have um, live webinars, not live webinars like on Twitch where there's a thousand people and the streamers just kind of goofing off. We have live webinars where the literal best players in the world are streaming who do not stream publicly. They don't want their streams out publicly. <laughs> and it's a small group of students there, 20, 30, 40, 50 students who can ask strategy questions and the streamer can then give one-on-one -on -one personalized attention. Later today, we have Draft Ganger streaming. Burt Stevens, he is the number one online player in the world in tournaments. He was number one player last year or the year before or something like that. Anyway, he is absolutely crushing it. He won two EPTs. Recently reviewed his $10,000 buy-in win for about 450 k on GG. He reviewed that for poker coaching members recently. So check that out. He's streaming later today, I think 3 p.m. Eastern time. And that's just what we are doing on a very regular basis. We bring you the highest level poker coaches and let you actively learn from them instead of you, you know, sitting back, having a beer, goofing off, watching a bunch of people who don't really know what they're doing mess around using solvers or, you know, going through a hand that takes 14 hours. It's not what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to bore you. We're not even trying to necessarily be entertaining and goof off for you. We are trying to help you get good at poker so that you crush the games long term. So yeah, consistently review your play, consistently study, and you will improve. I see you're asking me, how much should you be studying? Depends, right? What are you actually trying to accomplish? If you're losing at poker, you should be spending all of your time studying. You have to understand when you go and play and you don't know what you're doing, you're essentially goofing off because you're playing without an edge. What are you doing? You're just wasting your time and wasting your money. You really want to waste your time and your money? If so, this may be the wrong poker channel for you. You need to go find someone else. You need to go to the ones where they show themselves playing slot machines and bingo. But if you're not a winning player, you should be spending the vast majority, majority of your time studying. Before I ever played poker for more than a $1 buy-in, I bought all the poker books on the market and read all of them. This was back in the day when they didn't have training sites or anything. And I studied a ton before I even played for any stakes whatsoever. This is back when I was working a $10 an hour job. I started with 50 bucks and I ran it up slowly but surely. I always kept at least a reasonable bankroll for all buy-in levels I played. And it was basically impossible for me to go broke because I had an edge, I played a ton, and I was properly bankrolled, even for the tiny stakes games I started at. And you can do that too. So those are the seven tips for today for how to beat the small stakes games and move up. I want all of you to move up and crush the games over the next year. Let's do it, let's make it happen. So tip number one, increase aggression. Number two, value bet thinly on the river. Like we showed you earlier, even a $15 value bet won every day works out to something like $5,000 in profit a year. Number three, play tightly slash cautiously slash intelligently in multi-way pots. Number four, don't overplay your marginal hands. Number five, learn to deal with variance. Number six, play properly bankrolled and take intelligent shots. And number seven, study hard and improve every day. Someone tells me we probably have this link back up working now. Let's see, pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. Let's see if it works. You think it'll work? Please work. Pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. There it is. Good, good, good. We're giving away $5,000 to poker coaching members. Check that out at pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. I realize a lot of you could use a bankroll boost around the holiday season. You spend all the money on yourself, on uh, others. Well, give yourself a reward. We're giving away $500 to 10 winners. So 10 people are going to get 500 bucks this holiday season. Call it the John Jonathan Little Stimulus Plan. There you go. Get in there. How long are your losing streaks? Depends on what game we're referring to. Everyone's going to have losing streaks. Sometimes there are long periods of time. Sometimes they're not. Also, the amount of time doesn't really matter. What matters is how many hands or how many tournaments, right? What happens to a lot of people is they play poker one day per week and they go on a long three-month losing streak. Whereas in reality, they only lost 12 sessions. If you're, I mean, you're definitely going to go on streaks where you lose 12 tournaments in a row. That's just math. 
Let me tell you about my holiday sale I have going on, and then I'll answer some of your questions in the chat. I want to thank all of you for being here. Over a thousand people here today. Hope every day everyone's having a great day. We're having a sale at PokerCoaching.com. If you don't know, I have a training site, PokerCoaching.com. We're having a holiday sale. Check it out at PokerCoaching.com slash holiday sale. And we have loads and loads of products there for you to help you crush whatever games you are playing. Here we have um, lots of cash game content where I discuss beating 5, 10, no limit, discuss things like 1, 2, live. Um, these are normally 99 bucks. We're giving them to you for 79 each. We also have my cash game masterclass. This is a 29 part masterclass where I teach you how to crush the cash games all the way up to 5, 10, no limit and above. If you're a poker coaching premium member, this is just included in your poker coaching premium membership. We also have loads of tournament content, including my bigger 109 first place review, where I think I won something like $40,000 in a $100 buying tournament. That was a lot of fun. Um, also, we review final tables of the World Series main event. I show you how I prepared David Einhorn for the million dollar buy-in one drop tournament. That's all a lot of fun. Make sure you check those out. Also, I just released my tournament masterclass. This is over 180 parts long. You want an in-depth guide on how to beat tournament poker? Here it is. I got tired of all of the other sites out there putting out four-hour training courses that they're charging you $1,500 for that teach you the absolute basics. We have a free fundamentals course. Check it out, pokercoaching.com slash fundamentals. Here, this is 30 hours of strategy content with quizzes, lots and lots of interactive quizzes, hundreds of them, after each of the 180 parts, as well as many, many hand history reviews. This is actually not for sale, though. You can't buy it. The only way you get access to it is by being a Poker Coaching Premium member. And if you're a Poker Coaching Premium member, it is included. As you see, here all are all of the parts. We discuss pre-flop with various stack sizes, how to play on the flop in basically all scenarios with loads and loads of GTO strategy advice. Obviously, we discuss the turn and the river as well. And then we discuss ICM. I know we have three letters here, but this is actually a large part of the course. We have um, tournament format adjustments. We discuss re-entry tournaments, rebuy tournaments, satellites, progressive knockout tournaments, everything you need to know to win at tournaments. We discuss finances, other topics, and as you see here, all of these hand history reviews that I played over the last year. I only put, put in sessions on Sundays, so about half a Sunday now whenever I'm at home because I have a wife and two kids. But despite that, as you see, I don't even know how many it says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten deep runs that... Um, are here for you, including some wins and some high stakes games. This isn't even all the wins. Here's one of my students at PokerCoaching.com, Blas Zerzhal, says that poker coaching has laid the foundations for him to excel at No Limit Hold'em, as you see. He's cashed for $2.4 million over the last few years, absolutely demolishing it. Um, his results are not typical. <laughs> I should probably say that. Most of you are not going to win $2.4 million next year, but that's what we are teaching you all to do. That's the goal. Um, for poker coaching, for a poker coaching membership, if you want to sign up for three years today, you want to be locked in for long term, you want to commit to studying and working hard at poker, well, you can get it for less than nine bucks a month. What is that? 30 cents a day. 30 cents a day is almost nothing. If you want to study poker and get good at poker, you should probably be spending a little more than 30 cents per day on your education. Could you imagine if someone wanted to become a doctor and they say, you know what, I'm going to spend... Um, 30 cents a day on getting good at becoming a doctor. <laughs> it's crazy. Poker education is basically free. I'm actually kind of tilted we're giving it away so, so cheaply. At PokerCoaching.com, we have over a thousand interactive quizzes like I alluded to earlier. We want you to be actively learning so your skills improve quickly. We're not trying to sit here and you know take forever to get you good at poker. We want to get you good at poker quickly and interactive quizzes help with that. We put you in many scenarios give you scores on where you are playing well, where you are playing poorly, and that's going to go a long way to helping you improve your skills. So, I don't know if you all know this. So far, over the last eh, two years, I spent over $200,000 hiring our world-class coaches. It's a lot of money. It's not cheap. And every month, the bill is well over five figures for all of our coaches, for the premium members, because we have been producing loads and loads of high value content. We have over 300 
classes and webinars, including content by Brad Wilson, world-class cash game player. We also have Faraz Jaka. He just recently reviewed his $5,000 deep run in the WCOOP main event. We have the GTO master, Michael Acevedo. Oh my gosh, he has lots and lots of great content. I learned about him a few years ago. Had him write, a, write the book, Modern Poker Theory. I'm like, I gotta have, him be a, gotta have him be a coach of poker coaching, and I'm very, very happy with that. We also have Lexi Gavin, very, very strong cash game and tournament player. Matt Affleck, he makes live webinars every single week with the content somewhat directed by the students. He knows everybody's name. They're always in there studying every single week, working to improve their skills. And as you see here, Jonathan Jaffe, he is perhaps the most exploitative player in the world. He absolutely crushes it. Like I mentioned earlier, Burt Stevens, number one player online in the world, streaming for us later today. We also have James Romero. He is uh, he was one of the top 10 live players in the world pre-COVID. Who knows what the rankings are now, but he is an absolute crusher. Also, welcome our newest coach, Tommy Angelo. I have learned a lot through Tommy Angelo, even though I've not really worked with him personally. I've read his books. I've um, watched the content he made a long time ago for other training sites, and he is continuously upgrading himself, upgrading his um, teaching strategies, and I have learned a lot from him, and I know my students are as well. So I mentioned Evan Jarvis. Yep, we got Evan Jarvis as well. Lots and lots of coaches. It's also a lot of um, a lot of the, a lot of people on the training site have a few hours of content. I've been fortunate enough to work with many of the best players in the world, and we have content by all sorts of players in pokercoaching.com. So check that out. So let me ask you a question. Obviously, I'm not going to charge you the uh, over $10,000 a month that I'm paying for this content. That would be ridiculous. And even $500 a month, I'm not going to charge you. There is a popular training site out there. Good training site. They charge their students $500 a month. Even if I did charge you $500 a month, if all we did was help you win just one big additional pot every session that you wouldn't have won otherwise, what is that worth? That's worth a pretty good amount right there, right? What if all you did, what if all I let you do is just attend the weekly live coaching webinars with our coaches who have won over $50 million in poker and let you ask your biggest questions to them live every single week? What is that worth? Because that's what you get at poker coaching. You get to ask the best players in the world your questions. And if all I did was give you a way to put yourself in lots of poker situations to test yourself every single day without you actually risking money. What's that worth? And you get instant feedback from the world-class coaches so that you have a way of practicing every single day, even if you can't play right now due to COVID or because you don't want to play on shady sites that operate in America. What is this new situation where you can get feedback worth, where you can play and study and test your skills? Well, if you think this is valuable, if you want to get in there and learn from the best in the world and improve your skills on a regular basis, then you need to take advantage of the holiday sale and join Poker Coaching Premium. Here's what we have available for you all today. You can get a one, two, or three-year membership to PokerCoaching.com. Also, for the first time ever, we are going to offer a three-month subscription. Some of you said that you wanted to be able to sign up for a shorter amount of time. The dollar print was a little too big for a one-year subscription, even though it is, you know, relatively cheap in terms of dollars per month and dollars per day. Two dollars per day. Here you have it. Here are the offers. Check it out. PokerCoaching.com slash holiday sale. See someone in the chat. Do you have any sort of money back guarantee? Yes, of course. We are not some sort of shady person that wants to get your money and then light it on fire at the club. If you do not learn a ton from PokerCoaching.com, send me an email. Tell me you don't like it and I'll give you a completely 100% refund within 30 days. No questions asked. What more do you want from me, right? I'm literally spending many thousands of dollars every month for you. If you don't like it, I foot the bill. I am so confident that you are going to learn a ton and improve your poker skills that we're happy to give this 100% money back guarantee. Also, for poker coaching members, we have the holiday giveaway. We're giving away $5,000 over the next week to poker coaching members, just as a thank you. I appreciate all of you. You all let me live the life of my dreams to some extent. I get to stay at home a decent amount of the time working for all of you. I get to hang out with my family. I get to go play poker tournaments and I appreciate all of you. And, um, you know, throw in you 5,000 bucks cash. We also have a giveaway to win a poker after dark seat to play with me. $5,000 giveaway. We're just giving that away too. 
I have not looked at um, what other training sites are doing out there, but I doubt any of them are giving away $5,000 in cash on a regular basis to their members. So check it out. Here you go. Here's what we have available for you. Check it out, pokercoaching.com slash holiday sale. If you all have any questions pertaining to billing, support, etc., send us an email, support at pokercoaching.com, and we will answer those for you. Let's see. You need my knowledge on the flop if you hit top set. Well, don't fold. Don't fold top set. If you have to fold top set, you screwed up. <laughs> Simple as that. Should you get poker coaching premium? Um, if you want to study and get good at poker, look, I realize a lot of you don't actually care about getting good at poker, and there's nothing wrong with that. You do not have to get good at poker to enjoy poker. Now, if you want to win money at poker, if you're trying to succeed long-term at poker, then, uh, yeah, you should be studying poker. You have to realize, basically every world-class professional has spent tons of time studying, myself included, and I am taking everything that I have learned, consolidating it, and bringing it to you. That's exactly what all of our coaches are doing as well. Same thing. We are all continuously working hard and learning and giving you the best of what we have so that you do not have to waste any of your time. Do I think someone who's always played tournaments has any chance at cash games? Sure, you have some chance. What do you mean? They are different games, though. Recognize that the games are different. And uh, you should not think that because you're good at tournaments that you will be good at cash games. They are different games. They do require different skills. Okay? You recommend a Valentine's Day sale. Good idea. You miss Sunday streams. Well, uh, Faraz Jaka streamed for us just the other day. He streams um, at least once a month. Matt Affleck streams a decent amount for us as well. And Burt Stevens is streaming today. 3 p.m. Eastern time. He's going to be streaming his entire session today. Um, last time he was just like randomly playing $5,000 buy-in tournaments. I uh, checked already today. I think he's going to he has a few $2,000 tournaments lined up. That's just included. We ever do sessions on Omaha High Low? Probably not. So look, the problem with looking into and teaching other games is that most people who play other games only play one other game. And the thing is, is that most people don't actually play the other games all that often. I'm sure there is lots of high value content. I actually helped get a book together. Uh, where is it? Mastering Mixed Games. This was my project. I'm not the author. Dylan Lindy's the author. World-class cash game, or world-class uh, mixed game player. Also world-class tournament player. Here he is. He won a million bucks in a tournament Bellagio the other day. Um, check out Mastering Mixed Games. This is a very good introduction. It includes stuff on Omaha High Low and a bunch of other games. That's one of my projects that I helped get together for the poker community. You see all these books back here? I didn't write all of these books. I wrote most of them. But a lot, it's sort of like a passion project for me. I love helping people improve their skills. And I wanted a guide to all the various types of mixed games. And um, that's what we have right here. That said, it's not like super in-depth on any game. You know, it's not like my 45-hour uh, long tournament course or anything. But it is definitely quite big. Let's see, let's see. Why are some other poker training sites so expensive? Because people will pay, I guess. <laughs> it's a weird question. Um, I mean, look, I try to make my site affordable. I realize that a lot of people don't have a lot of money. I realize that times are tough right now in the world. People don't have a lot of money. I mean, I'm spending a ton of money on this site, so I try to recoup at least some of it. But I'm not out here trying to gouge people and, um, you know, fleece you. I'm not saying other people are out there necessarily trying to fleece you, but... You hear the kids? They're wailing because they know some people are trying to fleece you. I try to make this affordable. I try to make it reasonable, right? And I am quite confident that if you study from me at PokerCoaching.com, you are going to get better at poker. And as you continue wanting to learn, you're going to continue learning from me. I'm not going to stop putting out content anytime soon. If you look at almost every content creator in the poker space, they get in, they work for a month or two or a year or two, and then they just leave. They just quit. They think, oh, I did my work. I'm going to go chill now. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're allowed to do whatever you want with your life. But recognize that is not me. I'm going to be consistently working hard for all of you because I love it. I do not view making high-level educational content as a chore or as a job. I view it as fun because I learn in the process. I improve my skills. And if you've paid attention 
for the last, um, I don't know, 15 years, right? We've been here working hard for you pretty much every single day. No breaks. I don't want breaks. I don't need breaks because I love it. So anyway, check all of this out at pokercoaching.com. Like I said, we have the holiday sale, pokercoaching.com slash holiday sale. Uh, we have the giveaway, pokercoaching.com slash holiday cash. Holla, holiday cash. And um, that's it. Get in there. If you win your 500 bucks, let me know. I'm happy to hear about it. Like I said, we have a 100% 30-day money-back guarantee. And that's that. You're reading Excelling at No Limit Hold'em. Is it still relevant? Very much so. Demetrius, something I actively work hard to do is I try to not make content that gets stale. If you look at a lot of training content out there, it is not based on actual high-level theory. It's based on what the content creator um, guessed at at a particular period of time. If you look at a lot of the um, very old poker books, you can see this very much so from books from like the 90s. A lot of these books were just pure speculation. And some of them say like, oh, if you raise with ace-king and someone three bets you, you fold because, eh, you know, you're drawing. But that's not good poker, it turns out. Turns out if your strategies are based in solid game theory, you don't really have to go back and edit it and revamp it all that much because it is already very, very strong. And in Excelling at No Limit Hold'em, it was me and other world-class professionals working together to make very, very high-level content. Anyway, check it out. It's great. I learned a lot from that book. I actually have a new book that came out recently. Here it is. Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. Similar concept. As you see, Bert Stevens there. We also have John Van Fleet, world-class player. Vlada Stojanovic won the Stadium Series a few months ago for a million and a half bucks. Rob Tenyon, two times Sunday Poker Star Sunday Million winner. Anyway, lots and lots of great content and excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. Check that out. Anyway, hope you all have great holidays. I know that the times are always hectic. Make sure you are out there being nice to one another, improving each other's skills. If you hang around people who try to tear others down, who speak nonsense and spread hostilities, well, those people are losers. And if you hang out with those people and you like those people, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, you're probably a loser too. But understand, you can change. We are here trying to improve the poker world, build up each other, build up the community, and improve our skills together. So realize we can move forward, we can continue progressing, and we will actively improve our skills. So anyway, check it out, pokercoaching.com slash holiday sale. Get the discount. Like I said, I mean, look, if you sign up for three years, it's uh, 42 bucks a month. What's that? A dollar and change per day for, I'm telling you, all of the high-level poker content you could possibly want. I have a hard time getting through all of it, and uh, it's my own training site because it's, there's a lot of content there. So anyway, check it out. You have Excelling and Modern Poker Theory. Which one should you read first? Um... They're very different books. They're very different books. Which one should you read first? It's a good question. Probably go with uh, Modern Poker Theory because that's going to sort of lay the foundations, whereas then Excelling is more of like discussions on very specific topics. I want to thank all of you for being here with me today. Um, if you want to continue studying over the holiday season, there is a study group at PokerCoaching.com ran by Louis Philippe. Make sure you get in the Poker Coaching Discord. Go to the Community tab. Um, on poker coaching to get in that and then go to the study sessions and make sure you are actively working with um, all the people who are working to improve their skills. Has anyone got their money back after requesting a refund? We don't actually have to give all that many refunds, but um, every once in a while somebody asks and we give it to them. I know it sounds like I'm just giving you a free roll, but um, I am. Turns out humans have this thing where if somebody really helps you a lot, you don't want to screw them. And if I help you improve your poker skills. Yeah, you could ask for a refund and get your money back, but like, you don't really want to because that's a jerk thing to do. That said, if I don't help you, I don't deserve it. If I do not help you improve your poker skills, I do not want or deserve money from you. So take it back, right? I mean, what more do you want from me? All right, that's gonna be it for today. Enjoy yourselves. If you have any questions about anything, send us an email, support at pokercoaching.com. I have a great support team that'll get back to you in the near future. And, um... I don't know. Recognize I'm going to continue doing great work for you for the rest of this year and the next year and the next year and the next year. We're here for the long run.
to continue improving together. Good luck in your games. Have a great holiday season. If you like this video, click the like button. I would appreciate that. Check out pokercoaching.com slash holiday sale.